So you brought up the F bomb. So let's talk about failure. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so, so how has failure really helped you? Like, like share one of your biggest failures and, and, and your biggest learnings from it. Yeah. How about a $300,000 failure? Is oh, that good enough? Sounds fun. Sounds fun, <laughs> right? Okay. So uh, as you probably uh, saw on the bio on the website, um, I own several edible arrangements franchises. Mm -hmm. Great franchise. Um, been in that business for about 10 years. And I put together seven locations within four years in three states. Mm. Equals nuts. Crazy, right? Like yep. me as a young man going, okay, let's go as fast as possible, right? Mm -hmm. And I still want to go fast, but I've learned a bunch through that. And one of the things I learned, it was a $315,000 decision actually, so I decided to put a location in a specific part of a city that I didn't necessarily think should be there, but I put it there so that someone else wouldn't. It was the first time in my career that I was playing defense as opposed mm. to offense. Okay. Now, I'm all about defense. You got to have good defense. I come from a, a long history of basketball. You can't just score. You got to keep the opponent from scoring also. So in the moment, I felt like I was being strategic. In the moment, I felt like it was a good move. It was good business sense because I was playing good defense. Mm -hmm. But in the reality, I didn't, I, I overlooked the things that were necessary for that business to actually thrive because I was too worried or I was playing defense. I was on my heels as opposed to leaning forward playing offense. And so in the midst of even all of that, my wife, bless her, she tried so hard. Hey, we shouldn't do this. Hey, I think we shouldn't do this. Hey, mm -hmm. I prayed about it. I don't think we should do this. Hey, um, I really don't think we should do this. Hey, I prayed again. I don't think we should do this. <laughs> and I just kept coming back business case after business case after business case of why it made sense to play defense in that moment. And when I look back, it was literally a $315,000 loss because I closed that business. I lost money every year that business was in business. Yeah. And when I look back, I now think and go, okay, well, honey, you were right. She doesn't, well, maybe she does like the feeling of me saying that, but, <laughs> but <laughs> going forward, I'm like, okay, I want to be keenly aware mm -hmm. of not everyone's opinion, but man, she knows me better than anybody. And she knew she couldn't necessarily articulate in the moment why. But man, she was strong on, mm, I don't think we should do it. And, and I didn't slow down enough to figure out why. So speed is my friend, but man, it is, it is important to be able to think thoroughly. And, and sometimes you got to play defense, but every time I've played defense, it hasn't really turned out so good. It's always so, been offense. So is it, is, was it a space of of FOMO? Was it a space of scarcity? What was it that put you in a defensive mode? Great question. Um, FOMO is a, is a, yeah, I mean, maybe a little bit because not so much fear of missing out of that specific location, mm -hmm. but the achievement, right? Okay. I wanted to be the first person in the city with this many locations, or I wanted to be the youngest franchisee with the most amount of franchise, most amount of locations. There's a, there's a level of just straight achievement that is, you know, just inside of me. Now, some of it is like, it helps me propel forward. Like it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's beneficial. But mm -hmm. then the negative side of that is that I'm obsessed with achievement, <laughs> you know? So it's like yeah. achievement isn't everything you've mm -hmm. got to have, you've got to have um, some different perspective 